Language Notes Topic 11 Housing and Moving Have you ever moved to a new home? If you have, you can probably understand what my family is experiencing right now. We just moved to a new home and a new town. Life is really different right now. But moves are quite common in the U.S. On this very day, I know that other families, other people are also living out of boxes and living in a time of transition. I thought it would be interesting to share words and expressions related to types of housing and the experience of moving. When we talk about property, one of the first questions to ask is, do you rent or do you own? Do you rent property and pay monthly? Or do you own property? Did you buy it? What kind of property? Let's talk about types of housing. Some people live in an apartment. And we classify the size of an apartment by the number of bedrooms. A one-bedroom apartment, a two-bedroom apartment, a three-bedroom apartment. Sometimes people choose to live in a studio or a studio apartment. That is one large room for everything. There is not usually a separate bedroom. It's just one large room. Studio apartments are common in cities. My family just moved out of a townhouse. You also hear condo, which is short for condominium. A townhouse, our townhouse, had three floors, three levels, but we shared walls with other units, with other families. In one long building, we had about 10 units, 10 townhouses, so a townhouse is not a freestanding structure. It is a house and it shares walls with other units. We can say townhouse, you might hear condo. Now we live in what's called a single family house. Single meaning one, so it's a house for one family. Some houses were built for one family, but over the years, someone decided to divide that house into sections for different families, maybe two, maybe three. So in addition to single family houses, we also have multi, whoops, family houses, okay? Apartment, studio, townhouse, condo, single family house, and of course we also have multifamily houses. People move for different reasons. Some people relocate to another place because of work. To relocate, to move. Where did you relocate to? Are you willing to relocate to another city? For work, some people are willing to relocate. Some people move because they want a change of scenery. Maybe they lived in the city and they were close to restaurants, transportation, nightlife, but now they want to live in the country, or we say the countryside. They want peace, they want quiet. Out in the country, you buy lots of land. Maybe we can talk about acres. How many acres do you have? My family now lives in the suburbs. A suburb is in between. We live in the suburbs of Boston. Sometimes a move is not very far. Sometimes a move is local. It's within the same town, it's just from one neighborhood to another. My family chose to stay within the same state, but we're in a different town. 
other families move from one state to another. We call that an out-of-state move. Of course, the biggest move of all is a move abroad, a move to another country. When people decide to move, they often choose to work with someone who can help them. They choose to work with a real estate agent. Real estate refers to the business of buying and selling property and land. So an agent is someone who helps you get through that process. You'll hear real estate agent. You'll also hear the word broker. Who's your broker? Do you have a broker? There is a buyer's agent and a seller's agent. Are you buying or are you selling? People who are selling often organize an open house. They open their house to the public. People come in and look at the house. Who comes in? People who are house hunting. We call them house hunters. My husband and I did a lot of house hunting before we finally chose this home. So once you find the home that you like, your agent can help you put in an offer. You offer money to the seller. If you're lucky, they'll accept your offer. If you're not, they might reject your offer. Okay, you can accept or reject an offer. So the people who want to buy put in an offer. The seller can accept or reject. Or they can ask for a little bit more money, saying, well, what you're offering is not exactly what we want. We want a little bit more. That's called a counter offer. Let's write that here. When you're house hunting and you work with a real estate agent, the agent will want to know your wish list. The agent needs to know what you want in a property. One of the things my husband and I wanted was a house on a cul-de-sac. That's a quiet street because it's closed at one end. It's a dead-end street. So mostly, only the families who live on that street use that street. On our cul-de-sac, there are maybe 10 or 11 houses. I haven't counted them yet. <laughs> Sometimes, a family wants to buy a turnkey home. You also hear the expression, move-in condition. So everything is ready. You just turn that key, walk in the house, and everything is perfect. No repairs are needed. A turnkey home can be a little expensive. My husband and I chose to do repairs. <laughs> there are a lot of things that need to be fixed in our new home. And we also want to remodel. You'll hear the word renovate as well. We want to change some things and make things look different. And better, of course, too. But mostly different so it suits our style. Any new home will require some work when you first move in, but the two biggest extremes are a turnkey home and a fixer-upper. Which would you choose? Once you find that house, put in an offer, and get that offer accepted, you then start planning for your moving day. You can talk about when you're moving. People will ask, when do you move? You might need to get a moving truck or a moving van. If you have lots of things, you might need to hire movers. We had so many things that we wanted to put a lot of our things in storage, meaning in a place outside of our home where it would be out of the way and safe until we were ready to bring those things into our new home. 
we rented a storage unit. So we put things in storage, we rented a storage unit. Of course, when you move, there is lots of packing. Now we're in the phase of unpacking, taking everything out. The final part of the move is setting up housekeeping. When you set up housekeeping, you start living in your new home. You make it livable. And that's where we are in the process. Wish us luck. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and happy studies. Please visit my website today at www.englishwithjennifer.com. You'll find study tips, interactive exercises, vocabulary videos, and more.